In today's video, we're taking a look at how to install a dimmer switch easy and simple. This is so easy, anyone could do it. Everything that we use on the video, we're gonna leave a link on the description. So you woke up today with the idea that you wanna become the mood setting master. Don't worry, here at the Statabox team, we've got your back. Always remember to contact your licensed professional when doing any job at the home. The first thing that you want is to have your replacement dimmer to it. Now that you have that, the most important thing is to locate which one you wanna replace. Now that you got that information down pat, we don't know how this dropped to number three on the list but i guess that's how they wrote this the third most important thing that you want is not to die on a clear sunny day and we achieve that by turning off the breaker to that particular switch for more precaution you could turn them all off or turn off the main breaker now that we set the rules of engagement let's go ahead and remove the face plate this can easily be done with a flathead screwdriver or in some cases a phillip head screwdriver always remembering the ancient technique of lefty loosey righty tighty a pro tip before removing the faceplate from the wall you might want to score all of the sides with a knife or blade because the last thing you want is to pull off the faceplate and remove all the paint from the wall and you know this is very possible because many of us just paint the plate and the wall like one piece now that the wall of the paint is intact now using a non-contact voltage detector we're gonna double confirm that there's no electricity going to the switch and what you want is that the voltage detector doesn't sound beep or flashes and if it does you want to abort the mission so you can fight another day now we penetrate it the second line of defense and that is the two screws that hold the switch on the electrical box in some cases you might need a putty knife a flathead screwdriver or any object that can remove the paint off the screws if your painter did not confuse the wall with the outlet we can go ahead and proceed on removing the two screws that hold the switch in place remembering the ancient technique of lefty loosey righty tighty in this case we use a flathead screwdriver we always want to remember to save any screws or pieces that we would remove and we do this because one you never know if the new one that you got is actually working until you install it and second because of the mysterious power of screws nuts and bolts that get lost on the DIY world is like the mysterious power of the sock that goes missing on the laundry the great mysteries of life now if the paint does not have a stronghold on the switch you should be able just to put it with ease if you feel any resistance you do want to remove it slowly just in case the paint wants to come off with the switch as you can see in this particular one we have three wires two that are connected to the switch and the ground that was connected to the screw that hold the switch in place in our case we have a black and white wire we're going to go ahead and start by removing the black wire if you're replacing your switch for the same type of switch you can always take a picture of how it is installed and replicate it on the new one once we have the screw loose enough we can go ahead and remove the wire you can either use your hands or needle nose pliers let's go ahead and remove the white wire if you notice that the wire is too hard to remove after you loosen the screw you can always go ahead and remove the entire screw completely if you have a ground wire connected you want to go ahead and remove that as well we go ahead and separate the wire let's say if in your case both wires have the same color and you want to verify which one is the live wire you can do this by turning on the breaker again being extremely careful not to touch the wire and using your non-contact voltage meter you can place it close to each wire until you get an alarm or a beat once we know which one is the live wire we write that down on our mind we make sure we turn off the the breaker again and verify that there's no electricity on either of the wires now we can proceed to mark it with a piece of tape now that your mind has been saturated with information we're ready to take a look at the new switch dimmer this particular dimmer has wires that come out the switch are already pre-colored meaning it's a lot easier to know which wire is which the green one is for ground and our red one would go to the light fixture or to the low out the black wire is for the hot wire coming from the service panel because remember the job of a switch is to receive 
leave the current from one side and then pass it to the other side. Meanwhile, it's pressed on the on position. If it's on the off position, then it would cut supply to the other wire. Therefore, your light bulb not turning on. So it's basically stopping the circuit. Now, there's a second red wire, and this is used if in your particular switch work in a three-way. And no, not that three-way, but in the way that you have one light bulb and more than one switch turns it on. If you have one of those, it would look like this. It would have two wires on one side and then one wire on the other side. If you notice, on the right side, we have an adjustment wheel. This would adjust the dimming range of your particular system. Now that we filled your mind with information and data for a second time, we can proceed to our next step. Because in this particular case, we're not going to use the second red wire, which is labeled for a three-way connection. We're going to go ahead and cut that wire and tape it up. Because as you can see, all of these wires are pre -snit. so that the last thing we want inside the electrical box is any loose wire. And at the same time, the tape marks the three-way connection wire in case in the future you want to use it. We're first going to start with the ground wire. We're going to go ahead and remove the extra tip that was left on the wire. Then we straighten the wire, both the one coming from the electrical box and the one coming from the outlet. Depending on your finger strength, you might need needle nose pliers to straighten any of the wires. We make sure both wires are straight. We align them and push firmly the wire inside the nut or cap. We twist the nut clockwise until tight. We check by pulling the wire to see that they don't come out the nut or cap. If you're connecting your wire to screws, we use the same technique. We loosen the screw, we insert the wire and twist it around the screw, then we tighten. We verify that the wire is tight and would not come off the screw. Now we're gonna go ahead and proceed the red one without the label with our black wire. And this is the one which is not live. We use the same technique as before, showing the strength of our powerful finger and body. And now we finally end with our black wire, with the live wire. Depending on your location, country, regulations, laws, rules, or ordinance, you may want to add electrical tape to secure even further the connection. In some cases, this is an optional step. We make sure all the wires are secure, and now we're ready to place them in the electrical box. We slide them in gently and carefully inside the box, and remember to make space for the switch. Now that we have space for the switch, we go ahead and place it on the electrical box. We make sure that the dimming function goes at the bottom, but at the end of the day is your castle and you are the king, queen, both or none of it. And now we're going to use the ping pong methods to place the screws in. We go ahead and insert one of them 20% in, then we switch to the other one and we go 20% in. Now that you showed that box that you can move in parts, we keep doing this until we get it all in there. Now, before placing the faceplate, you might want to turn on the breaker, verify that the switch is working correctly, plus the dimmer option before we finalize the installation. Because the last thing you want after this hard work you put in is for it not to work. In this particular faceplate, it covers the screw, so that means that it has two parts. We go ahead and remove the inner part and install it using the ancient technique of lefty loosey, righty tighty. And once we tighten both screws, we're able to clip on the final faceplate. Now you've notched one more off the DIY list that only grows and grows bigger, but never shortens. You can pat yourself on the back for a job well done. You finally beat Raiden at Mortal Kombat. Don't forget, if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Either someone in the Static Box team or someone in the YouTube community and help you out with an answer. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching and here's a link for our latest video.